What's going on, guys? Vegito here. And uh, this is the second what if in this current what if rotation. And honestly, my personal favorite what if I've ever written being what if I was in the Pokemon anime. With this part covering Marnie's third gym battle, an Isle of Armor training arc, and mine, Avery, and Marnie's fourth and fifth gym battles, and my sixth. So remember, you will not be having light goals for any of the rotation what ifs. Also, I have been getting some comments recently asking, where's what if Cynthia sponsored Ash? Where's what if Ash joined Team Rocket? Again, guys. I know you guys like those what ifs, but I'm out here trying to stick to the what if rotation. And unfortunately, those what ifs aren't in the current rotation. In case of Void Light sponsored Ash. But I'll be making a special exception for that one video. Considering that video is gonna be my Christmas present or whatever holiday you guys celebrate a present to you guys. Now, also be sure to subscribe so we can reach our goal of 3,000 subs by the end of the year. Also, you can now support the channel by becoming a channel member for as low as $3 a month. Now remember that becoming a channel member is never required, but always greatly appreciated. Plus, channel members will get a shout out at the end of every video, priority apply to comments, and early access to video scripts. Now, enough of the shameless begging, let's get started. Now, before we get started, I'll go ahead and give you guys a team recap since it's been several months since this one has continued. We'll start with my team. First up is my starter, Haunter, with his moves being Shadow Ball, Venom Shock, Toxic, and the last slot is a constant rotation between the moves Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Dazzling Gleam. Next up is my Corva Squire, with its moves being Dual Wing Beat, U-Turn, Home Claws, and Air Slash. Third is my newly evolved Dreadnought, with its moves being Crunch, Liquidation, Rock Slide, and Ice Fang. Fourth is Scorch. With its moves being Fire Lash, X Scissor, Coil, and Crunch, as well as Burn Up as a, like a last resort. Fifth is Toxel, with its moves being Nuzzle, Growl, Acid, and Belch. And lastly is Grookey, with its moves being Grassy Glide, Razor Leaf, Screech, and Knock Off. Grookey also has the ability Grassy Surge. Marnie's team is up next, with her first Pokemon being Morpeko, with his moves being Quick Attack, Thunderbolt, Aura Wheel, and Torment. Impnimp is second, with its moves being Dark Pulse, Sucker Punch, Foul Play, and Play Rough. Krogunk is Marnie's third Pokemon, with its moves being Poison Jab, Brick Break, Taunt, and Venoshock. Marnie's last Pokemon is Scraggy, and its moves are Brick Break, Payback, Thunder Punch, and Ice Punch. And finally, we have Avery's team. First off is Galarian Slowpoke, with its moves being Surf, Scald, Psychic, and Shadow Ball. Dottler's up next, with its moves being Reflect, Light Screen, Confusion, and Struggle Bug. And lastly is Avery's Kadabra with its moves being Psybeam, Swift, Shadow Ball, and Dazzling Gleam. We left off with Choodle evolving into a Dreadnought and it's starting to disobey my commands. So I decide to try calling it back to its Pokeball. But before I can call it back, Dreadnought uses Crunch on my wrists, which hurts worse than getting a tattoo on your ribs. I fall to the ground, writhing in pain, with Dreadnought looking in 
horror if what it did with marnie avery and haunter coming to my aid with all of my other pokemon coming out and scolding dreadnought especially scented scorch and haunter with dreadnought getting a little taste of scented scorch's hidden rage with dreadnought trying its hardest to apologize for what it's done i tell dreadnought it's okay dreadnought I know it was just an accident. With Marnie, Avery, and Kabu taking me to the hospital, with the doctor asking Marnie what happened, with her telling the doctor that an accident happened with my Dreadnought, with the doctor deciding to wrap up my hands in medical bandages and give me a pair of special gloves to wear to help my hands heal. This is the way I decided to explore the whole damaged hands gag I have with my OCs, where I damaged their hands in a freak accident had to require gloves. Well, the way I had it for a Pokemon setting. As I check out the hospital with Dreadnought and its Pokeball, so we rest up for Marnie's gym battle until the next day, with Marnie heading to the gym the next morning, with Avery and I going with her for moral support. Marnie and Kabu agreeing to a 3 on 3 battle. Marnie using Impidimp, more Pekko, and Scraggy against Kabu's Torkoal, Ninetales, and Senti Scorch. Torkoal and Morpeko come out first, with Torkoal opening the battle with a quick attack. Right, Morpeko opening the battle with a quick attack, with Torkoal deciding to use a Stealth Rock, meaning any Pokemon that Marnie sends out after Morpeko will get a bit of chip damage. So Marnie takes this into account and decides to only switch in Pokemon if absolutely necessary. The so Morpeko uses Thunderbolt to hit Torkoal hard. But Torkoal uses Sunny Day to set up the sun. The Torkoal using a Sun Enhanced Flamethrower, which Marnie then orders an Aura Wheel to try and cancel out as much damage as possible. With this working, it's more Pekko taking a small amount of damage from Flamethrower, but the Flamethrower would cause a burn, which would reduce its physical attacking power. So Marnie only has more Pekko use Special Attack. With Morpeko using Quick Attack as a dodging tactic, with Morpeko managing to finish off Torkoal with a Thunderbolt, leaving Kabu with two. Nine Tails comes out second, with Morpeko trying its best to hold off the fox, but it would go down to a Sun Enhanced Flamethrower, leaving Marnie with two. Impotent comes out second for Marnie, with its Stealth Rocks hitting it on entry. Marnie decided to Impotent use Sucker Punch, as Nine Tails uses Flamethrower. This allows Impotent use his small size to get under Nine Tails and take it out rather quickly with a well-placed foul play, which after the battle, Impotent begins to glow with a white light as he evolves into Morgrim and learning the move False Surrender, with Kabu being down to one Pokemon. Kabu finally sends out his Senti Scorch, and with Marty building my Senti Scorch on occasion, she'd know its capabilities. Senti Scorch opens the battle with a Fire Lash, with Marty ordering Morgrim to dodge and counter with a Dart Pulse. Although Senti Scorch uses Lunge, hit Morgrim hard. With Senti Scorch getting close to finish off Morgrim, with Morgrim using False Surrender to catch Senti Scorch off guard and knock it out with Dart Pulse. Marnie manages to get her third badge added to her badge ring, and her some words of encouragement from Milo, Nessa, and Kabu. We decide to head to Hammerlock for the wild area, and after a couple days, we arrive and decide to head to Stow on side for our fourth gym battles. On the way to Stow on side, I try to work with Dreadnought to see if it will obey our in my commands again, but I have no luck with this. After a few days, an encounter with Team Yell, in which Marnie tells him to stop interfering with gym challengers. We arrive in Stow on side to challenge B for the fighting badge. We arrive at a gym and get into a massive teacup ride, where we're sent flying around my spring-loaded boxing gloves. After vomiting into a trash can from the motion sickness, it's great for this teacup ride. I get to battle B first, with the battle being a 4 on 4, with B using Surfetched, Grapple Locked, Kangaroo, and Machamp. 
I use Haunter, Orba Squire, Grookey, and Dredna. Grookey and Grapplock come out first. Grassy Terrain activating, with Grookey going in for a Grassy Glide. With B ordering a Detect from the Octopus, Grapplock using Close Combat on the, gr the Grass Monkey. Although Grookey uses a powerful Screech to get Grapplocked off of it, with Grookey using Razor Leaf to try and get some distance. Although Grapplock effortlessly dodges all of them and puts Grookey out of commission with a gr Octolock, leaving me with three. I send out Haunter next, thinking Haunter's ghost typing and the fact that he has Dazzling Gleam would net me an advantage. And this works. With Grapplock going down, add her taking a toxic boosted Venom Shock and Dazzling Gleam to even up the score. B sent in her Pangaro next, with it using a powerful Night Slash. Although a Dazzling Gleam from Haunter would leave massive damage, with B ordering Pangaro to at least take Haunter down with it. So Pangaro tries going for another Night Slash, but I call back Haunter so I don't lose another Pokemon. Barbie Squire comes out third and starts the battle off with dual wing beat. Although Pangaro grabs Corvus Squire by the wing and uses Circle Throw. Luckily, Corvus Squire was able to stop itself in time by hitting Pangaro with Air Slash to take it out of the fight, leaving B with chest her surfetched and Machamp. Machamp comes out third, and B uses Ice Punch in rapid succession to take Corby Squire out of the fight rather easily. Although Corby Squire would have wanted an Air Slash to weaken Machamp a bit. Dreadnought comes out as my fourth Pokemon, with it still disobeying my commands and deciding to battle on its own. With Machamp taking advantage of this by using Close Combat. Although this gives Dreadnought the opportunity to hit a Liquidation and Rock Slide, bringing Machamp close to fainting. Although B decides to G-Max her Machamp and humiliates Dreadnought with a G-Max Cheese Strike, leaving Chest Haunter to go up against a weakened Machamp and a healthy Surfest. Haunter comes out last, and he's still weakened from his battle with Pangaro earlier. Although Haunter decides to go out fighting, as I Dynamax Haunter and uses Max Starfall on Machamp to hit it hard. Although Machamp hits Haunter back with a Max Darkness, which is bringing Haunter close to fainting. But Haunter insists on taking Machamp down with him, so Haunter uses Max Starfall again to hit Machamp hard. Only Machamp uses Max Darkness to take Haunter down with it. And still B, as B still has Surfetch in reserve, she wins the battle. This is the first time I've ever lost a gym battle, and it hits hard. B helps me to my feet and tells me that I put up a good fight. But she knows a place where me and my friends can get stronger called the Isle of Armor. So the three of us agree to go there, since Marnie and Avery want to trade up their Pokemon some more before facing B. Although she tells them that she shares the gym with Alistair, a ghost type specialist. So there's a chance that they could face him instead of her. Although I request that my rematch be against her, with B agreeing to this and it tells me that when my Haunter evolves into Gengar, it can potentially Gigantamax like our Machamp. So, after saying goodbye to B, we head back to the Hammerlock train station with the help of a Corviknight taxi. After a few hours, we arrive in the Isle of Armor, and meet with Clara, Victor, and Hop. As I ask Victor where Beat is, as he tells me that he thought he was too good to train at the Master Dojo. So all six of us head to the Master Dojo and meet Master Mustard, as I inform Mustard that B was the one that sent us to him. Mustard reminiscing about his time training B, with him giving us all geese to change into. But Clara's being stolen by a group of Galarian Slowpoke. And as our first task, we have to catch the Slowpoke and help Clara get the pieces of our uniform back. Barney, Avery, and I decide to work together to get the uniform pieces back, and after a while, we manage to get them back, and Marnie and I get some good training in with our Pokemon in the process. But Toxel even managing to evolve into Toxtricity and learning a few new moves, being Discharge? 
Poison Jab, Swagger, and Hyper Voice. At sundown, we all return to the Master Dojo, with my group giving Clara her uniform, with her thanking me especially, which would make Marnie a bit jealous. I also inform Mustard about my dilemma with Dreadnought, as Dreadnought comes out of its ball to try and explain that it feels like I'm not a worthy trainer for it anymore, with Mustard saying to Dreadnought that if it feels so strongly about this, that he'll battle Dreadnought first thing in the morning. The next morning, before I even had a chance to eat breakfast, Buster takes me out to the Master Dojo battlefield and asks for a one-on-one -on -one battle, where I use Dreadnought against his strongest Pokemon. Buster then sends out his strongest Pokemon, a Rapid Strike Urshifu. Them saying, Regino, my boy, you're just like Leon when he was a kid. Although Leon had some good skills, Let's see your skills with that Dreadnought of yours! As I call out Dreadnought for battle, with it wanting to prove itself against a Leon level opponent. But Dreadnought once again battling on its own, by using Rock Slide against Dread Urshifu's surging strikes. And Mustard telling Dreadnought that attacking on its own won't help like that won't help it win battles. With Dreadnought using Crunch at Urshifu's leg. Although he uses close combat to hit Dreadnought hard. I try to call it to Dreadnought by saying, Dreadnought! Remember the promise the two of us made the day we met back in Motostoke? If you won't obey my commands, we'll never be able to defeat Leon. So, will you help me? With these words finally getting through to Dreadnought, as it uses a new move, Stone Age, with the move actually connecting. Although it doesn't do that much, Mustard orders Urshifu to use Surging Strikes, laced with Poison Jab, hit Dreadnought hard as Urshifu finishes Dreadnought off without even breaking a sweat. I call back Dreadnought and thank Mustard for helping me with Dreadnought. He tells me that today is an off day, so he wants me to explore the Isle of Armor as much as I can with Mark and Avery, and hopefully my team We'll be ready for the Master Dojo Tournament in a few days. And the winner will receive the secret armor of the Master Dojo. I get Dreadnought healed up as Avery approaches me, asking to do a trade with him to help his Kadabra evolve into Alakazam and to help Haunter evolve into Gengar. Since I'm gonna need all the firepower I can get if I wanted to defeat B. As Haunter and I agree to help Avery. After a trade and trade back, Avery and I send out Kadabra and Haunter and watch them evolve into Alakazam and Gengar. Three of us head all through the aisle, allowing Avery to catch himself a Star Yu while fishing and a Wubat in a cave, and Marnie to catch herself a Pongyard and have Scraggy evolve into Scrafty in the process. Avery also manages to finally evolve his Dottler into an Orb Beetle. As for me, I decided to train with Grookey to try and master Grassy Surge, with Grookey evolving into Thwacky in the process, learning a new move in Energy Ball. A few days pass, and in that time, Avery and I grab enough Max Mushrooms so that both Gengar and Orbeel can use her Gigantamax forms in the Master Dojo Tournament. The tournament arriving, and Mustard announces the brackets being Vegito vs. Avery in match 1, Barney vs. Clara in match 2, Random Trainer 1 vs. Random Trainer 2 in match 3, and Victor vs. Hop in match 4. All these battles will be 3-on-3 three three until the finals, which will be a full 6-on-6 six six battle. But for the sake of speed, we'll just focus on the important fights. So first up is Vegito vs. Avery with Avery picking Orbeetle, Alakazam, and his new Staryu, as I pick Senti Scorch, Dreadnought, and Gengar. Dreadnought and Alakazam come out first, with Dreadnought opening the battle with Crunch, with Avery ordering a Psychic to stop the Crunch in place. Dreadnought goes for a Stone Edge, which would score a critical hit on Alakazam, with Dreadnought taking up the Telekinetic Pokemon with a Crunch, an early lead. 
Dave recalls on his star you next, with it using Thunderbolt to leave Dreadnought paralyzed. So I call him back and send out Gengar. With Gengar using Shadow Ball, hit Star You up into the air and finish out the Sea Star with a Thunderbolt to widen the gap. Avery calls on his Orbeetle, with it using Psychic to hit Gengar hard. Although Gengar decides to hit with our Shadow Ball to weaken Orbeetle a bit, with Avery deciding to G Max his Orbeetle after that using G Max Gravitas to knock out the Ghost type to decrease my lead. Dreadnought comes out next as I Dynamax Dreadnought and use Max Geyser to set up the rain to double Dreadnought's speed thanks to its Swift Swim ability, with it using the increased speed to knock out Orbeetle with a Max Rockfall to send me to the semi-finals. Clara and Mark battle next. Marty decided to use her new pawn geared, Scrafty and Margrim against Clara's Scolipede, Drapion, and her new Venusaur. Pongard comes out first against Scolipede, with Pongard going for Aerial Ace to fight the Centipede, although Clara decides to use Toxic Spikes. Pongard using a powerful Psycho Cut to take down Scolipede rather easily. Clara sends in Drapion in an effort to take Pongard off the board with moves like Fire Fang, which unfortunately for Marty works to even up the score. Scrafty comes out next with Marty signing using a new move. He taught Scrafty in case she had to fight Clara in the tournament. Dig! With Clara being taken off guard by this, although Clara as Drapion used an aerial ace on the poison. Scrafty, which weakens it along with the poison from Toxic Spikes. Clara goes for a high jump kick to take out Drapion, leaving Clara with one. Venusaur comes out and Clara Gigantamaxes right away, with Marty deciding to do the same, but Clara using Max Ooze and G Max Vine Lash to hit Scrafty hard, although Scrafty decides to counter with Max Flare and Max Hailstorm. They Venusaur out and send Marty to the semis. Random Trainer 2 manages to win their battle and proceeds to the semis with all to fight the winner of the next battle. Victor decides to use Intellion, Karkle, and Appleton against Hops Cinderace, Dubwool, and Corviknight. I'm sorry, instead of Appleton, I meant Surfesh. Surfesh and Dubwool come out first, with Surfesh using its expert swordsman skills to also make quick work of Dubwool. Although Surfetch was taking a little damage from Double's Double Edge, Corviknight comes out and takes down Surfetch. Although Surfetch puts a lot of damage on Corviknight, Carcoal comes out next, with Corviknight hitting with rapid steel wings. Although Carcoal evolves into Colossal to take down Corviknight with a flamethrower, with Victor calling back Colossal for later for Inteleon to come out against Cinderace. With the two Gigantamaxing at the same time, the Teleon going for Max Airstream to increase its speed, and using its increased speed, and Teleon uses two consecutive G Max Hydro Snipes and finishes off Cinderace with a snipe shot. So then Victor the last spot in the semis. Victor then battles Random Trainer 2 without losing a single Pokemon in the process, earning Victor a spot in the finals. Marnie and I begin our battle by using more Peko and Thwacky, Grassy Terrain activating, Thwacky going for a Grassy Glide, with more Peko trying to go for a Thunderbolt, although it doesn't do that much, due to the fact that Grass type Pokemon resist electric attacks. Or Peko uses Aura Wheel to leave Thwacky close to fainting, although Grassy Terrain would heal up Thwacky a bit. Thwacky manages to end the fight with Branch Poke, leaving Marnie with two. Marnie calls out her Pongear next, as I swap out Thwacky for Sentiscorch. Sentiscorch uses Fire Lash to clash with Pongear's blades, and uses Coil to increase its stats, and hits Pongear with one last Fire Lash to knock it out, leaving Marnie with one, while I still have all three. Marnie comes calls out her Morgrim and proceeds to use her Dynamax Band to Dynamax Morgrim. Morgrim hits Scorch with a Max Starfall, with Scorch using X-Scissor, which hits for decent damage. 
So I use my Dynamax Band on Scenti Scorch, which allows Scenti Scorch to take the Imp out with a Max Slutterby, earning me the other spot in the final round. The battle between Victor and I is a full 6 on 6 battle. Mustard decided to do this to prepare us for 6 on 6 battles in the Gower League. Plus, I want to see how I can ride a 6 on 6 battle with myself involved. My roster for this battle is Gengar, Corvusquire, Dreadnaw, Sentiscorch, Toxtricity, and Thwacky going up against Victor's Inteleon, Surfetched, Corvusquire, Colossal, Leafeon, and Galarian Darumaka. Victor and I begin our, the battle by sending out Toxtricity and Galarian Darumaka. Darumaka opens the battle with a workup to increase his attack, and he uses Ice Punch. Iora Toxtricity to dodge it and fire back with a Screech and Toxic, leaving Darumaka poisoned, with Victor calling back Darumaka since he wouldn't want me to pull off my deadly Toxic and Venoshock combo. Victor sends out his Inteleon to take out Toxtricity quickly, with Mudshot in rapid succession, which works to give Victor an early lead. I send out Thwacky next as Grassy Terrain activates, and I order Thwacky to use Grassy Glide into a Razor Leaf, with Victor ordering a double team from his Lizard. The Razor Leaf takes out all of the copies, with Thwacky hitting Inteleon hard with the Grassy Glide. Victor calls it back and sends out Darumaka, with Darumaka using Ice Punch again, which causes super effective damage on Thwacky, almost knocking it out. I swap out Thwacky and send in Senti Scorch, with Senti Scorch hitting Darumaka around with constant fire lashes. Although Darumaka puts up a good fight, Senti Scorch knocks it out to even up the score. Victor sends in Colossal as his third Pokemon, making Colossal's rock typing would make this an easy win for him. With Senti Scorch Victor being right, as Senti Scorch gets knocked out rather quickly on the quad effective rock type moves. Rock Slide and Rock Blast, leaving Victor with 5, while I have 4. I send in Dreadnought next, with Victor asking me if I finally got a Dreadnought to listen to me, which I say I did, thanks to the Battle of Mustard's Urshifu. Victor orders Urshifu's Colossal to use Body Press, although I order Dreadnought to dodge and use Liquidation, which connects, causing big damage. Dreadnought uses Stone Edge to hit Colossal, although Dreadnought gets hit with a Flamethrower. Dreadnought knocks a Colossal with a Liquidation to leave Victor with 4. Victor calls out his Leafeon as I call back Dreadnought sending Corvusquire. I order Corvusquire to use Home Claws to increase its stats, with Corvusquire using Dual Wing Beats hit Leafeon hard. Although Leafeon uses Leaf Blade, so I said Leaf Blade, which doesn't do all that much to Corvusquire, with Leafeon using Iron Tail to hit Corvusquire hard. Although he uses Aegis Slash, so uh, Aegis Slash, Air Slash, to leave Leafeon unconscious taking the battle into halftime. Victor only has Inteleon, Corvusquire, and Surfetch left, Inteleon having battled already, so really Victor is only left with two fresh Pokemon. Victor calls out Inteleon, trying to take out Corvusquire, with Corvusquire using Air Slashes, although Inteleon takes it out with two consecutive Ice Beams, making the battle a 3-on-3. Three -three. As Victor calls back Inteleon for later, Victor and I send out our next Pokemon, Wacky and Corvusquire, with Grassy Terrain reactivating. Wacky can't really do all that much in Sentus Corvusquire, other than lowering its defenses with Screech. Dreadnought comes back out, and thanks to Thwacky's screeches, Dreadnought is able to make quick work of Cobra Squire to even up the score. Victor calls out Surfetch next, with the two old rivals clashing with Crunch and Brick Break. Dreadnought uses Stone Edge to try and cause some damage, although Surfetch takes out its rival with Leaf Blade, as I'm left with one. Gengar comes out last, and uses Dazzling Gleam. 
Although Surfax tries the brutal swing, but Gengar using Toxic and finishes off Surfax with Better Shock to make the battle one on one. Victor sends out his starter as we Gigantamax our starters at the same time, with Gengar using Max Lightning to hit Inteleon hard. Although Inteleon uses G Max Hydro Snipe, but Gengar finishing the fight with a G Max Terror making me the winner of the tournament as I received the secret armor of the Master Dojo, a Kung Fu. However, I decided to send Toxtricity to my parents so I don't have overlapping types. Now, Barney, Avery, and I take a Corviknight taxi back to Stow on side so I can re-challenge B and so Barney and Avery can have their gym battles too. I let Marnie go first, and this time, her opponent is Alistair. Since B and Alistair are version-exclusive gym leaders, along with Melanie and Gordy, I decided to make them share their respective gyms. Marnie and Alistair's battle is a 4-on-4, with Marnie choosing Orgrim, Morpeko, Krogunk, and Ponyard, since Alistair's Mimikyu, Ultiageist, Ursula, and Gengar. Marnie and Alistair send out Krogunk and Mimikyu. I know Marnie's a Dark-type specialist, I personally think Marnie would have caught a Poison-type to deal with Fairy-types. Plus, Krogunk can back learn dark type moves. Krogunk uses two poison jabs on Mimikyu, with the first one doing completely nothing to Mimikyu's disguise ability, the second one landing big damage and poisons Mimikyu. Any Mimikyu is on the clock, and unfortunately for Alistair, he can't switch out Mimikyu for later. Since in gym battles, only the challenger can make substitutions. Krogunk knocks a Mimikyu with a Shadow Claw, giving Alistair free. Alistair calls out his Paltia Geist next, with Marnie deciding to call back her Krogunk in favor of Ponyard. Paltia Geist does Nasty Plot to increase his special attack stat and fires off a Shadow Ball against Ponyard, which gets, which gets sliced by Night Slash. Ponyard uses Metal Sound to decrease Pong. Poltia Geist special defense, allowing Ponyard to use Dark Pulse to leave Poltia Geist unconscious. Alistair sends in Curse Law next, but Curse Law using Ancient Power against Ponyard, which wouldn't do that much. The Ponyard steal typing, persisting rock type attacks. Curse Law hits Ponyard with a Strength Sap to restore for its health and reduce Ponyard's attacking power. But unfortunately for Alistair, Ponyard regains its loss attack and more with Swords Dance and finishes out the Coral Pokemon with Night Slash, giving Alistair with one. While Marnie still has all four of her Pokemon, Alistair calls in his Gengar with Marnie believing that she trained with my Gengar, since he was a ghastly, she'd know all of Gengar's tricks. And boy was she wrong, since Gengar takes out Pongard right away with a fire punch. Decrease Marnie's lead. Marnie calls out her Krogunk next, but Gengar using Psychic to hit Krogunk hard. The Krogunk using Sucker Punch to land some decent damage, but Gengar uses Fire Punch again, but this doing a lot more damage than it normally would due to Krogunk's Dry Skin ability, with Krogunk being left unconscious. Barney calls out her Morgrim and uses her Dynamax Band and uses Max Starfall to hit Gengar hard, to the point where Alistair uses his own Dynamax Band to get the Gigantamax Gengar. And use G Max Terror on Morgrim. But Morgrim uses Max Darkness to hit Gengar hard and finishes it off to earn Max with Max Starfall to earn her fourth badge. The next day, Avery has his battle with B, and I'll go ahead and speed through this one. Avery uses Alakazam, Galarian Slowpoke, and G Max Orbeetle with B's team of Pangaro, a Lynx, a Lucha, and Hitmontop, allowing Avery to get his fourth badge. 
Now, on to my rematch with B, where I use Gengar, Corvus Squire, Wacky, and Cub Fu against B's Machamp, Grappolock, Surfetch, and Pangaro. The Wacky and Grappolock come out first, with Grassy Terrain activating. Wacky uses a Grassy Glide, but Grappolock uses his Detect to block. It's Wacky using Razor Lead to hit Grappolock to disorient it a bit, but Grappolock uses Close Combat to hit Thwacky hard. So I call back to Wacky as Grapplock heals me from grassy terrain. I send in Corvus Squire next, with it using dual wing beat to hit Grapplock for super effective damage, and manages to finish off the octopus with air slash, leaving B with three. As she compliments Corvus Squire on how strong it's gotten, sends in her next Pokemon as grassy terrain fades. Surfetched, the Pokemon she didn't use against me last time. Surfetched uses the first impression to land some good damage on Corvus Squire. So I call it back for now and decide to give my newest Pokemon a chance. B, being rather surprised at this capture, asks, Vegito, is that the secret armor that Master Mustard told me about? Pub Fu gets into a fighting stance and repairs the battle surfetch. Pub Fu would manage to put up a good fight, but due to Pub Fu's current lack of battle experience, Surfetch manages to take it down to even up the score. After taking a few aerial aces, I send back out Corvus Squire, pick on Surfetched again, by using Air Slash to hit Surfetched hard, although Surfetched then pinches land a Meteor Assault, by Corvus Squire learning Drill Pack to take out Surfetched to take B down to 2. B calls out her Pangaro next, with B ordering Pangaro take advantage of Corvus Squire, already being weakened from its previous two battles. Mainly with Grappolocked, Kangaro uses Ice Punch in tandem with Hammer Arm to try and hit Corvus Squire for big damage. With Corvus Squire trying to fight this off with Air Slashes and Drill Packs, with these moves leaving some big damage, although Corvus Squire gets a concussion from Pangaro's attack and gets knocked out. I send out Thwacky to battle Pangaro as Grassy Terrain activates once again. Thwacky uses Grassy Glide to try and get some good damage by taking advantage of the speed drop that Hammer Arm causes. With Thwacky using Screech to lower Pangaro's defenses and finishes it off with another Grassy Glide to take B down to 1. B sends out Machamp with Machamp making quick work of Thwacky to even up the score. Gengar comes out as B says, Finally, you brought out Gengar! I can't wait to see what sort of training you do with him in the Isle of Armor. I tell B, you won't have to wait any longer, Gengar. Gengar, let's show B what we can do. Gengar, Gigantamax! B also Gigantamaxes her Machamp as the two Cantonian trade evolutions clash with G Max Terror and Max Darkness, respectively. Gengar uses Max Mindstorm to hit Machamp hard, so Machamp uses the Max Flare to leave Gengar close to fainting. Gengar uses Max Starfall to knock out the giant fighting type. B congratulates me on a good battle and gives me the fighting badge and a weird scroll. I ask B what the scroll is for and she says, This scroll was given to my Master Mustard. It told me it can help your Cub Fu evolve into a powerful Pokemon called Urshifu. But the Urshifu that comes from this scroll is different from Master Mustard's Rapid Strike Urshifu. Now that all three of us have our fourth gym badges, we head out to Balanlay and challenge Opal, the fairy type gym leader. All three of us decided to train Gloomwood Tangle for a bit, Arnie's Krogunk evolving into a Toxic Croak. Just in time to battle Opal. We arrive in Balanlay and after we kill you for Pokemon, all three of us take on the gym puzzle, involving battling some gym trainers and asking the answering some trivia questions about Opal. Avery's up first, and I'll go ahead and speed through his battle with Avery using Alakazam, Orbeetle, Galarian Slowpoke, and Galarian Ponyta after evolving the Rapidash. I forgot to mention earlier 
Heck, B, that be Avery, caught Galarian Ponyta on the in Gloomwood Tangle while training earlier. Now, on to mine and, Ar and Marnie's battles, with mine being first, as I pick Gengar, Oxtricity, Corvusquire, and Centiscorch. It's Opal's Galarian Weezing, Mawile, Togekiss, and Alcremie. Galarian Weezing and Corvusquire come out first. With wheezing and strange steam, which confuses Corvusquire. So I call it back for Scorch. Wheezing uses strange steam again, although Scorch uses Fire Lash to try and stop the steam. With Scorch using Crunch to hit Wheezing hard, finishes off Wheezing with Fire Lash to take the lead. Opal calls out Mawile next, with Scorch making quick work of Mawile, although Scorch takes some damage in the process to increase my lead to two. Opal calls out Togekiss and manages to use Ancient Power to decimate the weakened Centiscorch. I call Toxtricity next, with the Rocker being more interested in putting on a show than taking part in the battle. Although I get through the Toxtricity in this regard, with Toxtricity managing to knock out Togekiss after using Overdrive and Poison Jab, making this spell 3 on 1. Opal calls out her last Pokemon, Alcremie. Alcremie uses Acid Armor to increase its special defense. Toxtricity tries to use Poison Jab, but Alcremie uses Psychic to knock out Toxtricity with relative ease. I send out Gengar as my fourth Pokemon, with Gengar using moves like Venoshock and Shadow Ball. Although these wouldn't do that much due to Acid Armor. Gengar ultimately decides to use Toxic, the Poison Alcremie, with the two Pokemon Gigantamaxing, with Gengar using Max Ooze to finish off the Giant Cake, allowing me to get my fifth Gym Badge as Marnie's battle is slated for the next day. Marnie uses Toxicroak, Orgrim, Morpeko, and Poniard. And it's the same Pokemon Opal using as myself and Avery. Poniard and Galarian Weezing come out first, and let's just say this is a terrible matchup for Opal. Especially since Poniard's Steel Typing resists Fairy and is immune to poison. So I'd say Poniard would make quick work of Weezing to leave Opal with three. Opal decides to call her Mawile next. With Marnie deciding to call back her Poniard for Toxicroak. Toxicroak opens the valve by using Brick Break to hit Mawile for decent damage. Toxicroak has to use an Earthquake to leave Mawile close to fainting, with Mawile using Crunch to lower Toxicroak's defense. Although Mawile gets knocked out after another Earthquake, take Opal all down to two. Togekiss comes out third and makes quick work of Toxicroak. By using Psychic. Although before it faints, Toxicroak manages to use Toxic to poison Togekiss. Leaving Marnie with three and Togekiss on the clock for the poison. Marnie calls out her Morpeko next, with Morpeko using Thunderbolt to hit Togekiss. Although Togekiss uses a dazzling bleed to hit Morpeko hard. Although Morpeko failed to give Togekiss a Pura, I'll take down Well, Morpeko just goes down to Togekiss's Aura Sphere. Wanting to save Poniard for Opal's last Pokemon, Marnie calls out Morgrim as her fourth Pokemon. Morgrim uses Foul Play to hit Togekiss hard, although Morgrim takes an Aura Sphere in the process. Morgrim is on its knees, with Opal telling Togekiss to use one last Aura Sphere to finish it off. Although Marnie has Morgrim use Ball Surrender, leaving Togekiss unconscious, leaving Opal with Chess her ace. Opal calls out Alcremie, with Morgrim trying to put up a good fight, although that Aura Sphere took a lot out of it. It ultimately gets knocked out by a Draining Kiss, the Marnie with Chester Poniard. Marnie calls back at the Chess Boost Pokemon, with her using her Dynamax Band, the Dynamax Poniard, Opal Gigantamaxing her Alcremie process. Although Poniard is able to use Max Steel Spike to quickly and efficiently take down Alcremie, allowing Marnie to score her fifth badge, with Opal saying, I'm getting too old for this, and to find a successor. He decided to head back to Hammerlock 
and take a train to Sarchester for our six gym badges. I will get to battle either Gordy or Melanie. Rock and Ice type specialists, respectively. We arrive at Hammerlock, where we see an audition for a Pokemon Rock Band. And knowing how much Toxtricity likes to put on a show, I decided to send out Toxtricity to let it try out. But Toxtricity managed to do really well in the audition. So well that Toxtricity becomes the band's rhythm guitarist. But unfortunately, due to the band, Toxtricity has to leave the team. Barney, Avery, and I bring, all bring out our Pokemon to say goodbye to Toxtricity as I hug the boys and type. Wishing it good luck with its dream. As I run off the towards the train station to Surchester with tears in my eyes, as Marnie, Avery, and Gengar all in their own ways. Vegito! Although with Toxtricity gone, this means Cub Boo gets a full time spot on the team, allowing me to train it more effectively. After a few days on the train, we arrive in Surchester to battle for our six gym matches and do the gym puzzle, which involves lots of pitfalls. But luckily, we got through it unharmed. I step up first to battle Melanie, where I'll be using Gengar, Scented Scorch, Corvus Squire, and Cub Boo. I get to Melanie's Frostmoth, Galarian Zarmantan, Ice Q, and Lapras. We call out Corvus Squire and Ice Q first, with Corvus Squire opening the battle with Steel Wing. Although this does no damage due to Ice Q's Ice Face ability, the Melanie calls for Hail, so now I'll give my Pokemon some chip damage with Ice Q's Ice Face being restored. So thinking ahead, I call back Corvus Squire for now and send in Cinder Scorch, which makes quick work of the Penguin Pokemon with Burn Up take the lead in the battle. Melanie calls her Lapras next, with Lapras using Surf to hit Scented Scorch hard. I call it back to sending Gengar as my third Pokemon. Gengar uses Thunderbolt to hit Lapras hard, so Melanie and I use her, her Dynamax bands to Gigantamax our aces. With Gengar using a Max Lightning to hit Lapras hard, Lapras using G-Max Resonance to leave an Aurora Veil, and using Max Geyser to leave Gengar unconscious. I send in Corvus Squire next, with Corvus Squire having a hard time against a giant Lapras, with Melanie calling for one last G-Max Resonance to try and knock out Corvus Squire. But through sheer determination, Corvus Squire manages to evolve into Corviknight and takes out Lapras with an Iron Head, a new move it Chess learned. Melanie calls out her Frostmoth third, although Corviknight makes quick work of it to the Frostmoth's poor defenses. Clearly, it's basically a glass cannon, leaving Melanie which has her Galarian Darmanitan, while I still have three Pokemon left. Galarian Darmanitan, this is Flare Blitz on Corviknight, with Corviknight taking a lot of damage, almost knocking it out. Although Corviknight uses Brave Bird, try and finish Darmanitan off. Although Corviknight is knocked out due to the recoil damage, I send out Scented Scorch next. Scented Scorch still being weakened by its battles with Ice Q and Lapras. Darmanitan uses Stone Edge on Scented Scorch, with Scented Scorch taking massive damage from the quad effective attack. Scented Scorch, Fire Lash to hit Darmanitan hard. So Darmanitan activates in Zen mode. Darmanitan and finally knocks out Scented Scorch with a Stone Edge to make the battle one on one. Cub Fu comes out as my last Pokemon, with Cub Fu going in for a Brick Break to hit Darmanitan for big damage. But this surprisingly being enough to knock out the Flaming Snowman, as Melanie hands me my Ice Badge. And with that, I'll leave this timeline off here for right now. So, let's get into the preview of the next What If of the Rotation. Hey, it's me, Goku! Wow! This trainer named Ash is crazy strong! I can't wait to battle him! Next time on the What If Rotation, Goku and Ash! What if Goku and Vegeta were in Pokemon Part 2? See you there!